more, and then I gave you a little, some blank page. You can take some notes on what they say a little bit later for what we've got going on uh, as we seek to follow Jesus together and do what he called us to do. So that, I'll let them share more about that in a little bit. But glad you're here. And also, I did want to just say, if anybody wants these <coughs> prayer cards, we, we've been um, going through the book of Acts this year, and they, they're praying, they're praying, they're praying, they're praying, they're devoting themselves to prayer, and we need to as well. So you can grab uh, a keychain, a little chain, a ring, and a bunch of these by the front table. Please, take them with you. Pray for the people around you. Ask people in, in your life. How can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? And then write it down and actually pray for them. How about that? Novel thought. And I just want to share a little story, and they're not here yet, but uh, y'all know the Stovers, and there are four girls. Their oldest girl, Miley, who I believe is 11 years old. Is she 11? Uh, she is super into these prayer cards. And I, I heard a couple weeks ago, she takes these to school, and she asks every single one of her teachers, how can I pray for you? How can I pray for you? How can, the faith of an 11-year-old. Isn't that awesome? I love that. And then I heard this week that Miley and a, a couple of her friends, when they go out to recess, you'll never guess what they do. They pray. They have church right there. In the, the the blacktop area, she got home and her parents, you know, Eli and Jessica, they said, why are your knees black there? And I said, oh, Daddy, because we, we kneel down in prayer on the playground and it gets our pants dirty and we're praying for students and we're praying for the teacher. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Amen. Is that an example? Like, wow. They are setting the example for us adults. Yeah. So, prayer cards, please, there's thousands of them. Take them, use them. We need some more prayer in our lives, and we need to be the church in the world. So let's do that together. Um, let's start off with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, we praise you for all that you've done, all that you're doing in our lives right now today, working through us. We pray that you would, and that we would have willing hearts to uh, share the good news of Jesus with the people around us and with the people far off too with everyone 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 needs to know the powerful saving name of the Messiah Jesus help us uh, to, to grow in courage and confidence and no matter what other people in this world might say or do to us we know that you have resurrection power, that he is yeah. still risen, Jesus, that you are alive, and you will one day make all those who died for your cause alive again. All the martyrs around the world still today, and everyone who trusts you, we cling on to that hope of resurrection and uh, forever life in the age to come. Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for your forgiveness and how you've changed our life and our eternity. I pray for those on the prayer list, those hurting physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, in their marriage, in their work. We know that you are with us in our hard times. Help us to lean on you and trust in you. In the good days and the bad, because you are still God. Amen. And you are still good. We love you. We trust in you. We surrender our lives to you. And this morning, we gather together to sing praises and glory to your name. God, we thank you most of all for who? Jesus. His name I may say. Good morning, Troy View. Good morning. We get the pleasure of doing music for you again today. Just <coughs> so stand with us.
want to may say that they wish.
trade the price for worth, and he's the only one that's truly worthy. <clears throat>
Welcome to Revive Ohio. All right, hey, Kyle Lance Martin with Revive Ohio, Revive OH, and yes, tonight is the kickoff. We are officially at our second community, All Glaze County, kicking off Dayton, Miami County. Yes, we are in Mercer County, our fifth community. It started off in August in Dark County, and now here we are in the winter, in the snow. I love what God is doing. Revive Ohio, say it again. Revive. Revive Ohio has uh, impacted me uh, personally as a dad. It's impacted the, the city and the county in a very positive way. Revive Ohio fired us up individually and collectively. I wanted to stand before you tonight arm in arm to just give you a visual picture that we are united in Jesus Christ for the sake of the gospel. God, I'm asking that you wake up the church to the truth. May we look at Jerusalem and weep over them. Give us the heart and the eyes to see. God, I'm asking for salvation tonight. Not because of numbers, but because of souls. In Jesus' name. Carry on, carry on. real, it's honest, it's straightforward, it's just loving on people and there's no there's no hidden agenda. There's no there's no nothing. It's just real. It's raw. And that's what I love I love about it. I pray that this is gonna continue after you guys leave and just bring the gospel. And I hope, you know, we're still walking the streets, going door to door and you know keep bringing people into Jesus Christ. I came out here today to uh Share the word of God with the Sunday football team and over 20 guys accepted Christ today. 23. It's awesome what happened awesome. out there. This Great. Is not this, is this is the new this normal. This is the new normal. Yeah. It's gonna keep spreading. Even if people didn't hear, I think they're seeing what other people are doing and they're starting to change themselves. And it's gonna, it's gonna be big. Hey, all day ministry at McDonald's. Seriously, why would you not want to do? That? We got all day breakfast, but now it's all day ministry, baby. <laughs> <laughs> if we keep going to more schools, I'll do this every day. Okay. We made 60 sandwiches, 30 McDoubles, 30 McChicken. Uh, we're going to be going into, the, into their lunches, and we're just going to be handing out free food to everybody and uh, asking if they want some love from Jesus and uh, sharing the gospel, going through the wristbands and the Bible with them. Lord, I want to say thank you for this group. Thank you for FCA, the leadership. And God, I say bless those that are sitting and standing. Specifically, the ones that are standing, would you encourage them that today is the day of salvation. Just write your name because we want you to grow in the Lord. We want you to start studying the Bible and we're going to have tea and the leadership start connecting with you guys, okay? I mean, the Lord is just showing up in ways that you can't predict. And so, uh, it's just like a wild ride, but it's so good. Shake and bake, baby, Dayton, Ohio. And you know that's right.
We can clap for that. Mike and Terry, I don't know if you know, we've been uh, journeying through the book of Acts this year, seeing how God is empowering uh, the early church to explode in growth because the believers were witnessing for Jesus almost 40 times. And you know, I haven't told you yet. Almost 40 times in the book of Acts, Luke writes that they were witnesses, witnesses, witnessing for Jesus because this is such a crucial part of the Christian's life. You know it. We know it. we got to do something about it. So I'm so uh, excited to have Mike and Terry coming up. This is my, This is Terry, and this is Mike. No, I'm sorry. This is Mike, and this is Terry. I know that. I know that. Mike and Terry, Terry and Mike. Thank you for coming with us, Terry. He's going to share about his organization and how they witness for Jesus and how we can be a part of it, joined in with them for God's glory and the good of those around us. I'm excited. Are you excited? Amen. Woo! Thank you, Terry. What, Terry? <laughs> Thank you so much, Mike, for coming. I know you guys. So, didn't that video look like the Book of Acts? Yeah. In modern day, it's what's happening. And so, in these songs today, every one of them resonated with what I was going through this morning. Every one of them had parts of this yes. wreck me. So, I'm Mike Smith. I'm from, I live in Pickle, Ohio, with my wife Becky. I've been a believer for about 16 years. God broke, and in that amazing grace, he talks about chains, not a chain. He started breaking my chains, and he's still breaking my chains. And he started breaking my chains 16, 17 years ago. He delivered me from alcohol, tobacco, and bass fishing, because all good things took all my life. <clears throat> so about six years ago, I was in a, little, in a church like this, and one of the guys I've been loving on came up to me and asked me if I could help him understand the Bible. I said, yeah, we'll meet. I said, well, let's meet at Tim Hortons on Wednesday nights. So that first week we were there, the Lord just put on my heart. He goes, he doesn't know me. If you all know Moses, I said, that's not me. I can't do that, right? I'm not the pastor. I can't do that. And God says, I know, but I can do it through you. So the whole time I'm leading this guy to Christ, I am shaking, visibly shaking, as I'm going through and praying with him. And he accepted. So my desire is for nobody to be in that situation where they don't know or don't feel equipped or don't know how to do this. So my journey, and I'm an evangelist. I really am. I'm an evangelist. We're not all called to be evangelists, but we're all called to evangelize. Amen. We're all called to go out and share the gospel. Evangelize is sharing the gospel. Sharing the love of Jesus Christ. So shortly after that, I got a message from a friend of mine. We were pretty close, though. I didn't know he went to church. He didn't know I went to church. We didn't talk about church. We talked about gardening and growing vegetables and eating clean food. That's all we talked about. And he, he got out of his comfort zone because he was going to a, what he thought was a revival. It was Revive Ohio. He said, man, you got to come and see this. What's going on in my church here in Dark County? I'm like, okay. I said, how long is it going? He says, it's going all week. So I said, we'll go on Thursday. So we went on Thursday. And we're sitting in the crowd. There was like 900 people there. It was unreal. It was like... He was telling me there was something moving, and there was. There was 900 people in the crowd. And I come to hear the evangelist. But little did I know that that day the evangelist wasn't going to speak. A pastor came up front and says, today we're going to go out. This evening we're going to go out. We're going to get in groups of four. We're going, to, we're going to do a quick training, and we're going to send you in the streets. So that was like, okay. My wife looked at me, she's like... What are we going to do? I said, we're going to go out. <laughs> so we went out. And it, it changed. that day changed my life. That day, the evangelist was out with the Greenville football team. That, that evening. And we was to pray that evening for the Greenville football team at 7 o'clock. So when we got back in at 9 o'clock, the evangelist came up and said he had talked with the Greenville football team shared the gospel with 37 members of the football team accepted Christ right there on the field. 
to me, that was like, that was all it took to me. It was like, okay, I'm all in. This is, this is real, right? You know, football player, I mean, kids. That's, that's what we all want is our children to know Christ. So we have the message in the Bible to go. You guys are studying Acts right now. It says in the book of Genesis in chapter 7, God told Noah to go to the ark. So it started in the beginning. God was telling us to go. God told Abram to go to the land which he would show it. And there is a cause to follow Jesus. I want to read to you Matthew 9, 57 through 60. Actually, it's Luke 9, 57 through 60. So in Luke 9 it says, Now it happens that they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds have air, of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Then he said to another, Follow me. And he said, Lord, let me, be, let me first go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, Let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. So what God was revealing to me this morning is God must come first before all else. And when he was talking about the Father, he was talking about his past. He was talking about his past. He said, do not let the past hurt you in the present. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. When we go out in faith, not hope. Hope is in the future. We're hoping for next Saturday. We're hoping. But faith is in the present. Faith is right now. So when we when we go out on Saturday, we'll be going out in faith. We won't hope we meet somebody. We'll have faith that God's set up appointments for us all to go out and walk this out. <clears throat> there was a there was a gentleman that was at a revival event who pulled into a gas station after they went out. And he was going to get gas. And God laid on his heart to pray for the attendant. And he said, he just said, no, God, I don't have time. So he sticks his credit card in, and it says, see attendant. <laughs> Here's your sign. And he still fought it. He said, no, I don't have time. He pumped his gas, and he remembered he promised his buddy that he would bring him a Pepsi from the gas station when he got back to the church. So he walked into the gas station. Guess what he seen? He seen someone praying for the attendant. So that humbled him that, okay, God asked to use him, and he didn't, and he used someone else. And he just showed it to him, and he just humbled him. So just this past Wednesday night, my wife had a meeting here in Troy, and I, um, we, had, we had a doctor's appointment before that, so I was with her. She was, what are you going to do? I said, I'll just grab one of my revived Bibles. I'm just walk the streets. So I walked the streets praying here in Troy, and I walked blocks and blocks and blocks just asking God to put somebody in front of me and it was like it wasn't happening right I kept walking and I did a huge circle and I came up behind the courthouse and I walked in between the courthouse and the state and their county building and there was a lady there working on her camera I said can I I introduced myself asked her how I could pray for her and she goes I just got off the phone with my daughter she's, she's been giving me a lot of trouble She's 16. She wants to run away from home. She was, I need prayer. So we prayed for that. We prayed. And she thanked me. And as I walked away, this young man walked up. He was walking by me. And I stopped him and I introduced myself. He was a freshman in high school. And I asked him how I could pray for him. And he said, pray that I pass. Because I spent half the year this year in South Carolina. And I'm back in Troy. And I said, I can do that. So I prayed for what he asked. And I asked him if, if he'd been to church. He said, a little bit, but he's in South Carolina this, this past year. He's not really been, grown up in church. But he's very polite, introduced me, kept calling me sir. So I handed him the wristband and the Bible and I took him through the scriptures. And he accepted. And before I, he accepted Christ, he was just a freshman. I said, he said his mom was waiting to go over there. So I went over and asked his mother if I could 
continued to lead him to Christ? And she said, yeah. So he got back out and he prayed the, prayed the salvation prayer and he accepted Christ right there at, by the courthouse. So then I walk on back because I figured my wife said her meeting was 30 minutes and it ended up being two hours. I thought I was already late. So I get back I get back close to the car and I run into a, a couple walking down the street and it's... And I asked the gentleman, I said, I introduced myself, I said, how can I pray for you? He says, you can't pray for me. And he just gave me that mean look. He was, he was angry. And his girlfriend says, yes, he can. So he stopped and he listened and we talked. And he's been, he'd been fighting. He had, he'd been in the drug and alcohol realm, but he had been clean, but he's been struggling. And he said, God let him down. He's been struggling, he's been white knuckling, and he's really having a tough time. So I prayed with him. I continued to talk with him. I talked for over 30 minutes. I thought, sure, my wife's going to interrupt me, but she still had her meeting. Her meeting went way beyond what it was supposed to because I had this divine appointment. So I, I prayed with him. And then I God was laid on my heart because we, we, we discerned what the Holy Spirit's doing. And the Holy Spirit was working on this guy. And he was, he was still angry. He was still angry, but he was... He was listening and he was telling me he wasn't sure if he just wanted to go back to the drug life because if nothing else he would feel better or he would die. And that's where he was. That's where he was at. And in John 5, 6, Jesus says, Do you want to be made well? So I just flat out quoted, I didn't quote a scripture, I just said, Do you want to be made well? Because it was laid on my heart. And he said, Yes. So in John 5, 8, Jesus says, rise up and take your bed and walk. So, there's a faith there. There's an action that has to take place. So, I said, so you want to be made well? He said, yes. I said, well, there's a recovery service Saturday night. Right here in town. I said, you come and we'll pray for you again. And um, he said he would be there. He said he would do it. So, I wanted some action in his... Well, because he had already accepted Christ. He'd already had a walk with Christ, but he had fallen away and he was thought God had let him down. So, he shows up Saturday night, recovery service, which my wife says, you think he'll be there? I said, I think he will. I felt confident. I felt real confident he'd be there. And he came in the recovery service. And then, during the service, he, it, just, it, it felt different that day. And during the service, they decided to call the band back up and play some more songs because they felt the spirit was moving. And they played another song, and then one of the lady friends of mine was singing. She went to the keyboardist. She distinctly went up and said she had a song that was laid on her heart she wanted to sing. And that song was I Surrender All. And before she, when she started to sing the song, she came up the mic and she says if anybody here today feels they need to surrender at all or surrender part of their life or, or to rewalk their life they need to come up past the pastor will be up here and pray for you she said to anybody so I looked over and the gentleman was looking at me I walked over and says do you want to go up and his girlfriend goes on our way to church today he said I don't want to surrender at all and that, that song came up so, God works all the time. God is always, always setting things in motion. Way before things we can, and we look back at him and just, and I told the lady, and she's shaking her head. She goes, God gave me the word. I sang the song. He was, he was looking for the sign. And he said, he said, God's been wrecking me. And last night he went up and said he surrendered it all. He's going to give his life back to Christ and he's going to continue his walk. Amen. Amen. So, yes. God wants to use us. Every day, God wants to use us. And it, I can go through, like you said, there's many, many chapters and verses in the Bible that tells us to go. But we're like, what do I do when I go? How do I do this? I don't have confidence. These tools that we use are not tools that make it happen. These tools that we use are to give us confidence to God and to share what we do and what we do. We, we train people up. We'll have a training on a Saturday morning. 
we'll go through some, we'll go through a few songs. We'll set our hearts straight. We'll go through training, and you'll have a leader on your team that's been out and done this before. And we'll just go out and love on people. Everybody we talk to is not going to even hear the gospel. They're going to see. First and foremost, they're going to see the gospel. They're going to see us love on people. We may only just pray with somebody. But we just want to leave everybody we meet on the street better than we found them. We want to let them walk away knowing that they've been touched by somebody. And I don't know how many in here has ever been approached by someone on the street and asked if they could be prayed for. Anybody? But it's, it's as, a, as a member of the Big C Church, it, it burdens my heart that, to think that, that nobody has been approached and asked, how can I pray for you? You know? It's uncommon. Right. And how many, of, how many of us have actually stepped up and went on the streets and said, how can I pray for you? Thank you. So it's just as uncommon for us to ask as it is to be asked. So, if God's tugging on any of your hearts, if God's saying, I need to do more, if God's telling you, you know, I do a lot for this church, but He wants me to do more. He wants me to step up and do something else. He wants me to become more involved. If, if that's any of you today, you can come up after the service, the last song, whatever, you can come up, me and Pastor Terry, Pastor Dan will be up here, and um, if anybody wants to be prayed for, we will do that. So now we're going to transition into a little role play. Terry's going to share what's on his heart, and then he's going to take you through what we do on the streets with the Bibles. Okay. Again, my name's Terry. Um, I attend the Valley Church in Troy. Uh, about five years ago, actually this month, the Lord laid on my heart to begin to pray for Troy and Miami County, and, and especially Troy. And uh, an attorney friend of mine here in Troy, uh, we met every Tuesday, 6.30 to 7.30, and we began to pray and intercede. Um, uh, he developed, uh, we got a precinct map, and, and we had all the pastors, their wives, uh, where they were at with a, a, a push pin on the map, uh, all the first responders, the mayors, the councilmen, and, and we just... Uh, just began praying and interceding for our community. And, um, and so for five years, we've been doing that. Now, and then, and then I felt like the Lord saying, okay, you know, I've, I've been in an intercessory prayer. Any intercessory prayer people here? Uh, that you're on your knees, that you're praying and interceding. And, and you know what? Sometimes it's a very, um, it's a very quiet ministry. But I felt like the Lord was saying, okay, now I need you to go. And, and so I had been, just like you guys are in Acts, I had been studying that and, and, and uh, going through some different training and things. <clears throat> and, and, and I'm talking to my prayer partner and I'm like, you know, we need to go door to door. We need to do something. And, and then uh, I ended up, I found out about uh, Revive and so I get online on Facebook and I'm like, okay, uh, who's, who's over the Miami County? And, and so I found out from the state lead, he introduced us. And the first time we met at a Cracker Barrel up in Piqua, uh, we ended up having church service in the rocking chairs, uh, prayed uh, and sang with a World War II veteran, um, prayed for his daughter who, who had had surgery on her neck, and another young man was sitting there kind of watching the whole thing happen. And, and so that was our first encounter together. And uh, what God has laid on my heart is, is, you know what He says, Terry? He says, you need to pick up your cross, deny yourself, and follow Me. Pick up your cross, deny yourself, and, and follow me. And he, and he says, if you're not willing to follow me, guess what? You're not going to be my disciple. So folks, it's not an option for us to not share the Gospel with people. It's not an option. It's a command. 
And he's saying, as you go out into the world and you preach and you teach and you baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, lo, I am with you always. Everybody say always. Always. Even until the end of the age. He's with us. When we go out, and, and you know what? I've, so I've done it 12, 12, 13, 14 months. Guess what? I still get nervous. <laughs> but you know what? It's exhilarating to go out and especially when you see God puts you in front of somebody that they needed to hear from God. The Holy Spirit has a way to lead us. God is already preparing the hearts of the people that we're going to pray for. And not everyone we ask, sometimes, and it's, it's um, not very often, but sometimes people say, no, I'm okay, I'm okay. Well, guess what? You're going to get prayed for anyway. You know, whether I do it in front of you or after you leave, I'm going to pray for you. Um, I want to share real quick, several years ago, and what touched my heart, my grandfather had cancer, uh, esophageal cancer, and then you know, he was in and out of the hospital. I moved, I was uh, a young man, I moved in with him for a year, and, and this uh, Southern Baptist guy here in Troy, uh, I call him Preacher Paul. He was kind of like a lay pastor. I don't know that he's, he ever even had any formal training, but he worked construction south of Dayton. When he got off work, he still had his construction boots and clothes on, and he would go door to door. He would go door to door just loving on people. You know, how can I pray for you? And, um, and he connected with my grandfather who was a raging alcoholic. My aunt and uncle who lived next door, raging alcoholics. And, uh, and every day after work, every day, he would go and he would spend some time with my grandfather. He would love on my grandfather. If my grandfather, and he was in and out of the hospital for two and a half, three years, any time, not one day was my grandfather in the hospital that preacher Paul didn't come and love on him and share Jesus with him. Now, I didn't even necessarily believe the same way this Southern Baptist uh, uh, believed. But the thing that caught my eye, he loved people. He did not want to see people die without Jesus. To die without hope. He led my grandfather to the Lord. My aunt and uncle, the raging alcoholics, he led them to the Lord. Several years later, at McDonald's before they built a new one, that's how long ago it was, I see him and I go in and I sit down and I'm kind of catching up with him and, and you know we're talking about the Lord and the whole time he's looking around. He sees somebody come in the door and he's like, i got to go. And he goes over and he begins to share with them. And, and later on he told me, he says, that year I was able to lead 65 people to the Lord at McDonald's. So folks, as you go, anybody go to Walmart? Yep. As you go. Anybody go to Kroger? Yep. As you go. Anybody go to Meyer? As you go. He is with you. And you know what? You know, we've become, the church, we've become so impersonal. It's like it's, it's us and them. And folks, we are on mission. As you go everywhere you go, you go to the doctor, you're on mission. You go to school, you're on mission. Wherever you go, you are on mission for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. Take Him with you. Share Him. You know what? I, I heard it read. It was a Barna study. It's something like 2% of believers have ever led anybody to the Lord. What an indictment against us, the church. Folks, it ought not be. And you know what? Guess what? I am an introvert. I am an introvert of introverts. Huh? Are you an introvert? Yes. To be able to even stand in front of somebody, uh, you know, 20 years ago, 30, actually 40 years ago, I would have said, you're crazy. 
But when I accepted Christ, I said, I will do whatever you call me to do. And what does He do? He puts you in a situation where i got to lead a, uh, uh, a life group in, in a home with peers and in a 20-minute little Bible study. And, and literally, I couldn't do it. I was scared to death. And I would actually study and pray for like 40 hours for a 20-minute Bible study <laughs> because I couldn't do it. But He could. And He could do it through me. Yeah. And He taught me how to live and walk and move by faith. And, and folks, I'm telling you, just taking that step, and even if, even if you say, well, that, that's not me. I could never do that. Well, here I want to challenge you. Go out with us. You don't have to say a word. Just walk with us. Just see. Just see how we pray. How we love people. How we encourage people. And, and, and we've had, I don't know how many first-timers that they go out and, buy, and before we go back after a couple hours... These people that are introverted, and Mike was especially, man, he is an introvert of introverts, and, and you know what? He broke down, he got through the fear barrier, and he began to share Jesus with somebody. I, I, when we came back and we kind of gave our testimony, I just sat there and, and tears welled up in my eyes to see somebody got victory over fear. You know what? Fear will keep us from doing and, uh, and, and experiencing great things in God. Yes. Huh? Yes. Fear will cause you to live a boring life. I'm telling you what, being a Christian is not boring. Especially now, this day and age. It's, we're living in some crazy times. And, and folks, this is our time to shine. It's our time to get out there and love people, share the gospel, and, and you know what? We can't save anybody. It's only the Holy Spirit. It's only God that, that can save people. And Jesus says, I come to seek and save the lost. And guess what? He called us. He's commanded us to go with Him and to share the Gospel. Amen? Amen. So I want to encourage you to do this. So when we go out, uh, you know, my hopes... My hope when I go out is that I can go through the Scriptures. But, uh, you know, as Mike said, sometimes you get to go through the Scriptures, sometimes you don't, and you just have to allow the Holy Spirit to lead you in that. Uh, but, so, it, so let, let's say I come up and I ask if, if I can uh, pray with you. Uh, there was a man, first time I ever went out in Springfield. What's your name? Caden. Caden? Caden? Um, there was a 16-year-old at a, working at a food court, and I sat down, and he even went to a Christian school. But I'm pretty sure he really did not know Jesus as a, his personal Savior. And, and I sat down with him and began to talk to him, and, 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 and I asked him, I said, uh, you know, can I pray with you? And, and he allowed me to pray for him. And I said, you know, uh, would you have a couple of minutes? He was on break. And, and I said, can I, can I just share uh, five scriptures with you. Take about five minutes. And he said, "Yes." Would you? Are you okay to read out loud? Yeah. Huh? Okay. So, so I would open the open the Bible up. It's tab one through five, and and I would open up the one, and and the scripture that he's going to read is highlighted in black. Okay, everybody can kind of see the highlight. And I would ask him to read it. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Who's all? All we are all sinners. Yeah. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. You know what? That puts me and him kind of on some same footing. We both need Jesus. We both fall short of the glory of God. We're both sinners, are we not? And so then I would turn to number two and I would ask him to read that. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift, free gift of God is eternal life. Christ Jesus is our Lord. The cost of sin is what? The wages of sin is death. Sin produces death. But, everybody say but. but. The free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus Amen. our Lord. Man, I tell you what, that's some good news. 
You know, you start talking about sin and death, that's kind of scary. But when you get to the second part of that, uh, that, that it's, but salvation is a free gift from God. Now we have something that we can put our hope in. And then number three. But God demonstrates His own love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Came Christ while you were a sinner. Christ died on the cross for you and for me. That's how sacrificial His love is. Even before you were born, He knew you. God sent His one and only Son to die on the cross for you. Okay. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not as a result of work, so that no one may lose. You know, sometimes, you know, you ask somebody, well, you know, or, do you think you'll go to heaven? Well, you know, I, I, yeah, I'm a good person. Yeah, I think I think God will uh, uh, will all good people will go to heaven, right? Now, you ever hear that? Huh? Oh, hell is going to be full of good people that never knew Jesus Christ. And guess what? We have an answer. That hope is in Jesus Christ. For by grace you have been saved through faith. It is not of yourself. You can't earn your way. There's nothing you can do to get to heaven. It's a gift from God. What a gift. Huh? What a gift we have in Jesus Christ. And then one more. You had great. Right. That if you confess with your mouth of Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him for the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in the righteousness, and with the mouth of confession, resulting in salvation. So at this point, I might say, okay, what would keep you from accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior and to forgive you of your sin. And it's real interesting to see the countenance change as you go through these Scriptures and, 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 and people begin to read from, you know, it's not me telling them, it's them reading the Word of God and the Holy Spirit beginning to convict the heart of that person. And, and, and so at that point, they may, may say, well, you know, I probably need to do this, and, or yeah, I want to, you know, I want to get saved. Or, and, and so then, you know, you just lead them in that prayer of salvation. And then, and then say, let's say they do that, then I have a, uh, a wristband. These wristbands are the, uh, uh, the five scriptures uh, that, uh, that we just shared, and I would give them that. And, uh, and, and then if, if I would actually lead them through the Scriptures and they accept Christ, I would probably also just give them my, my New Testament uh, 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 revived uh, Bible. So, uh, but, it, but, then, but then also, you know, Caden, um, would you like to have somebody come alongside you and, and, and you know, help walk you through the Scriptures, help you grow in the Lord? And, and if they would say that, you know, we would exchange... Uh, the information, and if I couldn't do it, then I would find maybe a youth pastor or somebody that would come alongside you and encourage you in the things of God, and and that's called discipleship, right? Uh, you know, uh, evangelize and disciple, and and that's what the church is called to do. It's not just the pastor, it's not just the leadership, it's what we are called to do, to evangelize the world, to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Everywhere you go, and we all go places, right? Are there, are there hurting people everywhere you go? Yes. Huh? And guess what? Love them enough 
to step into their life and encourage them. Sir, how you know, how can I pray with you today? You'd be surprised the people that God will put in your path to pray for. And you will be a word in season. You will be the right place at the right time with the right person. Because that's just the way God works. Uh, you know, every time we go out, it's different. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes I, I go in some place and, and I'm like, I, I'm just not feeling it here. We'll go somewhere else. And and but you know what? As we go, we're loving on people. We're we're praying with people. <clears throat> Who can pray? Who can talk? Who can love? Guess what? You're all qualified to go out Saturday. Every single one of you because that's what it takes. Now, not if you have a bad back. Uh, okay, I'm glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad you said that. So, part of our team... So, a- after we do the training, uh, we, we also have a team that stays back and intercedes. Now, we have the... Um, it's called the Revive Hub. We put our team name, you know, we break off into teams of three, four, depending on how many people we have. And we, we have our team name, we, we put it in there. And so as we go out and we begin to pray with people, we'll have a scribe. And that scribe, uh, after we get done praying, he'll kind of, he or she will step aside and, and they will uh, send that prayer request to you. Uh, here, the, 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 the prayer warriors that are staying back and then as you get them, guess what you're doing? Praying. You're praying over those prayer requests. You know, we may go to the next person, but guess what? We still have people interceding for that situation, for that family, for that person. And, uh, and so, you know what? You are as vital as any other person in that. And that we have continual prayer going up to the throne of God for these prayer needs. And it's a beautiful, 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 beautiful thing being the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. You know what? The most we can do is pray. That's the most important thing as believers we can do is to pray. But then, it's to go. And as you go, just remember that. You get in the car, guess what? I'm going somewhere. As I go... Okay, here. Holy Spirit, uh, Lord, as I go into Kroger, would you just put somebody on my heart? So we don't just do this once a month. So we, we get in practice so that we're doing it every single day as we go. We have our family over as we go. You know, as we're loving on people, we're staying open to God as to what He would have us to do. But you know what? If you don't open your mouth, I guarantee you, you probably won't ever offer to pray for somebody if you don't ask them. Truth? Huh? Yep. Okay. So, we come alongside of the church... And the reason we come alongside the church is, like me and Terry, we're evangelists. We go out, we're praying with people all the time on the streets. But we can't disciple all these people. So that's what Revive is all about. Is we, we go to different churches every month. And we, we have people go out in the streets with us. And they see what we do on the streets. And some of them, some of them say, oh man, I want to do this every month. You're welcome to come and join us. Because we'll have people come here Saturday. We'll have people coming here from different churches. They just... They even just different feel, counties. From different counties even. Because they feel part of wanting to be evangelist want to, or wanting to evangelize. But the church's responsibility is to disciple the people. In the, that, we're disciples. We're supposed to disciple people that come to Christ or, or want to be led farther in their walk. So now we have these people that want to go somewhere. So you're on the thing with us. And they ask us all the time, what church you go to? I'm like, well, um, I go to Pickle Nazarene, but I met her today. What church you go to? What church you go to? 
Well, four different churches. Well, you know, that's a miracle first, right there, right? Four different churches, four different denominations. Usually, it's more like out. seven or eight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just on the one team of four. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and then you you may connect with the person. You may invite them to your church on Sunday, or you may say they they may not be comfortable with church yet, but you may say, "Well, let's do coffee. Let's let's do coffee. Let's talk," because all. All of you come into this church building, but how many times do you think if somebody comes by the parking lot and maybe even stops or slows down and like they're just scared to death? They've never been in a church. They've never been in a church. So I don't know if you guys have seen the Jesus Revolution when the hippies started coming into church, right? I mean, these people were scared to death. These people have never been in church, never never don't know Christ. They just don't show up. That's why we're called to go. And we're called to make them comfortable. When they once they know you, they may come with you to church. You may say, "I'll pick you up." Sit with me. Right. So that's that's the whole purpose that we do is we we're in different churches every month, and um, we have an email list. If you guys can't make it this week, but you want to go to the next one, you can get on the email list, and Becky will send you an email every month. Once a month, she sends an email out where we're going to be, what time it's going to be. So other than that. Um, like I said, me and Terry and Pastor Dan will be up here in front. And you guys are playing another song, you said? So when you guys play the last song, if anybody feels led, they need prayer about something, we'll pray with you guys. Terry, you want to finish this up in prayer before sure. we go? Sure. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank You for the opportunity to share today, Father God. Lord, we speak blessings upon this household of faith. Father God, we ask, Lord, that You would encourage, that You would strengthen, that You would edify, that You would build up these believers, Father God, that they would only walk by faith. Uh, Father God, You said without faith it's impossible for us to please You, that You are a rewarder for them that diligently seek You. So, Father God, we ask Your blessings upon our brothers and sisters here. Father God, just as You broke the chains of fear, doubt, and unbelief in, in our life and continue to do so, Father God, we're asking today that You would break the chains of fear in our brothers and sisters that may say, you know what, I, I always wanted to, I can't do that. And, and Father God, can't is not in Your vocabulary. Your Word says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Greater is He that is in me than He that is in the world. So Father, we just ask, Lord, that You would touch the hearts. Father God, I'm believing that there's going to be a good turnout Saturday. Father God, that as we go out, that You will uh, infuse, encourage, that, Father God, that, that You will take what Pastor Dan has began and, 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 and sharing out of Acts. And, Father God, that they can uh, not only hear about it, learn it, but, Father God, uh, have a practical application, a simple way to go out and to love people. Father, bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Our final song is <clears throat> Oceans, uh, Where Feet May Fail. And uh, one of the lines is, Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Yes. So, Amen. We're hooking up again. Yes. Thank you, Lord. You'll stand with us for the last song, please.
for prayer after the service. Lord, may we be your witnesses in this world. Yes. Amen and amen and amen. amen. Yes. Can I sit down? Please? Absolutely. Absolutely.